Welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn a little bit about uh, references and the different types of references. There are four types of references. Most of the, the references that you use out there, they are the what's called the relative references. If you notice here, we have the sum and then C5 through C13. When I drag this over, it replicated it. It went to D5 through D13 and then E5 and E13 and so on. So it's moving from one spot to the other in a relative way. So if you remember when we did the annual net income in this formula earlier, we had a problem when we referenced like uh, the number of months here via a formula. So for example, um, if we go here and use the autofill feature, Notice to calculate the the annual net income for these employees. Notice it works. It gives us the correct values. However, if we go and delete this, and like I mentioned earlier, it's best to use references for calculating stuff. So let's say we want to get the net income, the net pay, for example, for for a month for the first employee here is this value. And then if we wanted to calculate it based on a predefined value, for example, number of months or number or annual. So let's say 12 here. So it'll be that times 12, monthly income times 12. Hit enter. Notice the first calculation is correct. And the reason is because we just entered it manually. You could do the same thing here for the second one. So you do equal the monthly times the number and that will work. However, if you go and drag this down, that will not work. It will give you zero. So notice what's happening on the one that it's giving you a zero. It's multiplying G25 times this blank number here. So it's going one down and one down from our original place. Then we go to the next one. Notice it's going further down. It's going three down from our original place because we started here. One, two, three. So we started here. One, two, three. And now we are in the fourth spot. So that's why we are getting zeros. So what we are doing here is that these references, they are called relative references. So for example, this one right here, its reference or its address, it's L20. And that is not locked. If you were to make it an absolute reference, meaning stay put and lock down, what that'll do is, or the way you can do it as an absolute reference, referring to this number of months, is by putting dollar signs here. So if you put dollar sign in front of it, in front of the L or the column, and in front of the row, and then hit enter here, it'll still be the same number. However, when you use the autofill feature, Notice those calculations will be correct because it's locked on L20. We are telling it, the system not to go down here on L. Now you'd say, well, why would I want to use a point of reference here? Well, the idea here is that you'd say, well, if I want to hire this guy for six months or these guys for six months, then what would be their annual salary? So you could just simply change this to six hit enter and all of these numbers will be updated automatically. So that's the base, uh, the advantage that instead of you having to go to the formula and tinkering with the number of months manually for each one of them, you just have a single point of reference. You change that to 11 months, to 11 months or whatever, and that is updated automatically. And that's the beauty of Excel. So here technically you could put sum or total. You put the sum of all these. And then at any point you can know, so let's say I want to hire them for 18 months, what your expenses will be. Here's another example. If we go to this other tab and notice, let's say you have a budget of $20,000 for something. Let's say that there is going to be a decrease in your budget by 5% on each item. Now you have training, for example, training was $4,000. Now the 5% you have to give up calculate how much you have to give up on what the difference is here that you have to give up. So what you do is you do the equal sign and you take this number training the value times 
the percentage that you have to give up. And then you hit enter. So you have to give up $200. Now notice what happens, that if I drag this down, I get very large numbers. On the second cell here, on D7, I don't get anything. But on the other ones, you'll notice in a moment that you'll get a very large values. And by the way, anytime you see these number signs here, that means that column, it's not wide enough. So what you have to do is go to here to the top and move it to the right. Or another trick here is to double click between the columns and it will make it exactly at the widest point. Now your question would be, well, why do I have on this on travel, I had only $2,000 budget, but now somehow the difference is $10 million. The reason for that is because, notice what's being calculated. It's calculating C, so C11 right here, times C9. Because what's happening is, as it's moving down, when we did the autofill, as the autofill was moving down, it shifted one down automatically. So if we go here, it was C7 and C5. So 100 times 0 is 0. The next one, it got 8,000 times 4,000 is 32 million, and so on. So what we need to figure out here is we need to use what's called an absolute reference. So we delete all this stuff. And by the way, this is one of the difficult concepts to explain, but this is uh, important and we need to know it. So on the absolute reference here, what we do is that we go and change a C4. Remember we said that if you see this C4, that's a relative reference. If you see it with the dollar signs, that's an absolute reference. There is also a third type of reference. So you have the relative, and the relative references would be, for example, C4. Absolute, that will be dollar sign C, dollar sign 4. And then you also have what's called mixed references. And uh, mixed references, when one piece either the column or the row is the one that is locked. So it could be, for example, C dollar sign four or dollar sign C four. So either one of those. So in our case here, we're gonna go back here and we want to, because we have one point of reference. So we want to lock this. So that means it will have both dollar signs in the reference. So we do C6, which is this guy, times 5%. Now, you can either type the dollar signs manually there, or you can press F4 in Excel, and it will put the dollar signs automatically for you. If you push F4 again, it will change it to a mixed reference that I just explained a moment ago, or the other variation here of the mixed reference. And then you tap it again one more time, that will take you to the relative reference. What we want in our case is the absolute reference. Hit enter, now drag it down, and notice that our calculations are correct. Now you'd say, why would I go, want to go through all of this trouble? The reason for that is because the economy is doing worse. And what you do is, it's a, the boss comes along and says, there's gonna be a decrease of 7%. You simply type seven right there, everything gets updated automatically. Let's say that uh, you're planning on something and or giving a raise to your employees or a percentage. It's gonna be instead of 7%, it's gonna be 9% or whatever it may be. You just change one value in one place and then all references to that value get updated automatically. So it's a very important concept. It's very important to use. You'll find uses for it in business. And it's very important to remember how to do this. Now, before we actually leave here a moment, let's explain a little bit the, the mixed references. On the mixed references, well, you'd use those if you have a bunch of those values or key values that you would modify. And those could be either in a row or in a column. Now, if the, you want to lock them down by that specific row, what you'd do is you'd simply lock down the row portion of it. So it would be this first one, the C dollar sign four. So you're locking in that specific row. If you wanted to lock the column, depending on what, where the column is, then, or what the values in that column are, then you'd lock 
it would be the second instance here. So the dollar sign C and then four, because you're, you're allowing the rows to change, but not the columns. So let's try it here. So let's change this to a mixed refer. We press F4. So now we are locking it by the row, just four. So if we when we scroll down, the values should not change. And we'll notice here that it will work. It will be basically stay the same because we have one value. I hit enter. Notice it's 360. If I do the autofill, it should work. So it stays the same. If I went and changed the formula the other way around, so what that does is that we locked it by the row. Now, if I go this way, however, notice I'll get a no value. The reason for that is because it's calculating here D6, this value by the next one, because we did not lock the column, we locked just the row here. So if we wanted that, so let's say we had 5% here, then notice it's taking D6, this one, and it's moving one to the right. So it's doing 360 times five and giving us a high value. So we, that's not what we want. So now let's go ahead and change this first reference here to a mixed reference, but having the dollar sign in front of C. So we do F4 and then hit enter. So if I go to the right, it moved to the right. However, if I go down here again, it's not going to work because again, we are not locking the rows. It's changing on the rows. So it's just moving one down because the, the rows didn't get locked down. So most likely you'll not use quite as much the mixed references. However, you'll use mostly the absolute references where you're locking to one point and that's it. So the important concept here is to use their relative references that you most commonly use. There are absolute references with both dollar signs where you are locking on a special, you know, particular cell location. And then you're using mixed references where you're locking either the column or the row.